guys, I got two cutie patooties in here today. We've got story teaser. I think it's number 11. 11 is my number. So how could we have any more fun than this? You know, it's not 11, 11, but um, time-wise. This is a story teaser for Win the Wellness War, the second book, compilation book of the All Things Wellness series. What? Um, and these two people, you guys, um, Ziggy and Martinet, were in the first book. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be in the next book and the next book yep. and the next book. So listen, if you haven't watched any of these before, go back. They're all over my Facebook page, or you can get them on my YouTube channel, All Things Wellness um, Media YouTube channel, and watch them. They're super fun. They're giving you a little bit of a teaser into their story. Their story is about 2,000 words, true, authentic stories that are super hard. Martinet can even say that first book even is like, you're a great Ooh. example of someone was like, I don't know if I'm ready to tell this. Let's work through this. And I'm like, you can do it. We can do it. I mean, it's hard for everybody. When I shared my story with my sister for this book, it took me about three months, hardcore three months to go back and forth with her and go, hmm, not sure. <laughs> not sure if I'm ready to do this shit, right? Not everybody's dead yet. Not everybody's dead. Um, and I say that jokingly, but. All right, so let's get going. Ziggy, um, you were part of the first book. Is there anything you felt different with this experience of the second book? Um, I think if I felt different about anything, it would be sharing a reality that people kind of don't see, if that makes sense. Um, it but it's also one that people very deeply are a part of. And it seems like the more time that goes by, as far as technological advances, whatever, more and more people are doing it but less and less people are talking about it. It's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of curious. Like what the hell is he talking about? So listen, guys, <laughs> um, couple of things before these guys get started. It's hard to write your own story. It always gets easier. These guys both blog for me as well. And Ziggy, you just came out with your own um, blogs with us. And no matter what, whether you've written before or not, it's scary shit when you go on a different platform or different environments, right? So um, keep trying, you guys, and let's get started. So Ziggy, go ahead, read us your title, and then tease us with a few hundred words. Oh, geez. I have, um, my title, I believe, was from behind the gaming chair this time. Yeah. Um, only because it's it's the other aspect of life that I've got the most experience in is I've gotten hair. Um, so I kind of just said uh, I have I have decade old friendships with people that have never been more than pixels on my computer monitor. Yet with the power of voice chat, I consider them some of my closest friends. These relationships, oddly enough, come from spending time in a reality. Some people to get away to become someone that they could never be in real life um, or what they say is IRL, uh, a place where a browbeaten accountant can come be a powerful troll mage using his knowledge of ice and fire magic to overcome enemies big and small, where a nine to five factory worker with an abusive supervisor can come to a renowned goblin shaman using his relationships with the primal elements to slay enemies to heal their friends. Um, I've been the funny chubby guy for most of my life. Um, however, I've never been one to be reclusive or shy away from social situations. I've always kind of embraced them. Making more friends was a natural fit because in the game, I wasn't judged as the overweight guy. I'm allowed to get to know others to get to know me for me. Um, I wasn't the brunt end of the jokes by guys trying to look cool in front of other guys as they casually poke fun at you at my, or at my labored breathing for being not only heavy but asthmatic i didn't have anyone to laugh at the expense of my asthma or my eczema breakouts um in the digital world i was able to slap on the persona of an orc warrior and my actions in the game were praised and met with kindness and friendships rather than ridicule naturally for me that reality was a very attractive thing you know the craziest part about it is what the people i had met and got to know empowered me to become healthy though and through their support of new workout ideas or, or eating habits, what have you, and the community truly became a family for me over time. Yeah. Oh, you guys, I'll tell you, you know, Martin Abo and I both have radio shows. She's also a media partner for me in this book. Um, and I learn something every single day. And I have watched you, Ziggy, with this behind the gaming chair, you know, behind the barber chair, your first story. Yeah. 
enlightened us with like, you know, that's how you and I met. And yeah. um, it's amazing when you think about the the exposure when we go to get our hair done, you know, so you're, you're their counselor and you're their teacher and you're their wife yeah. doesn't know what the hell's going on. Then when you took me honestly into this gaming world, and I think we've all mothers, parents or whatever, have seen <laughs> kids and we're going, get a life, <laughs> right? Get outside yeah. and play. What the hell are you doing? You have really flipped my head and a lot of people who are editing your stories and with your blog to make us think differently. You read, you honestly. The next, the next blog is going to be a doozy. Love doozy. Yeah. So Martinet, yeah, what was your doozy. thought? What were your thoughts on, on what Ziggy just shared with his story? Well, being um, somebody who was uh, picked on so much <laughs> as a kid, um, I, I, I just, I resonate with that, you know, like it hiding behind something and building friendships behind something, um, and having them support you. I, I, I get that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It, uh, and the Dr. Marcus Betstein, who's my, um, co-author when he read your story, one of the conversations we'd had back and forth is when you had equated it to a meditative type experience and process for you, for you to decompress and get your head on yeah. and done your busy day. I, I just want to say thank you for taking us into a, a different world. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah for sure. Martine, are you ready to share some of your story? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, just to say, too, that this book was different because my first one was like you said, like you're kind of afraid because people aren't dead yet. That kind of thing. Plus putting out your first book. It's like, oh, scary. And this one, I'm like, OK, yeah. I know what I got a little idea of what it's like, just like anything. Right. You have some yeah. evidence. So, you know, you can do something. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. OK, so tell us your title and then tease us. Goodbye, Mama. Mama, oh mama, I couldn't believe my sight. Mama, it's me, it's Martine. My words were met with a somber stare. My vibrant, healthy mama was gone. I thought I had prepared myself for a declining health, but clearly I hadn't. Ultimately, my mom was diagnosed with a psychotic form of dementia. Sounds scary, I know. Her physical and mental changes seemed to appear after a car accident. My dad's injuries were minor, but she never recovered. My mom was vibrant, loving, compassionate. People were drawn to her. People at the grocery store, church, retreats, anything she attended, uh, they loved her. And although a stay-at-home mom, she was fiercely powerful, independent, and never hesitated to speak her mind. She is also a kind and compassionate heart. She exuded love. In June 2013, my dad called Martine. I can't take care of your mother by myself anymore. Can you help? I said, of course, dad. I told mom that I would always be there for you, but I can't move back to California. Can you come here? Hmm. And the adventure wow. began. It did. I just got goosebumps. Mm -hmm. This is what I love. I mean, I want, I want to see what Ziggy's thoughts are, but I just want, if you guys are watching this versus hearing it on a walk, if you're watching this and you look at Martine and you look at Ziggy, they are, they're very different human beings, not only gender wise, but their life experience, their life path, their professional resume, their personal resume. And here you're bringing two people from across the world together with two very different stories. And yet we feel like we're there, we're there for each other. I mean, that's what this book has been about with these authors is they're not just random people that we found on the street, you know, we, in the sense of we found them on the street, but we've come together to get to know each other, just not in an interview like this. Martine heard me say that the last book, and I swear I'm going to keep saying it till I die. It's really important for us to know each other if we're doing projects together, volunteering, writing a book, cleaning a house. I don't care what it is. Get to know each other. Ziggy, what was your thoughts on Martine's story? Um, my, my heart kind of broke a little bit. Um, I can't imagine watching someone you look up to your entire life mentally disintegrate but stay physically the same if that yeah, makes any sense it does knowing the next day you're walking in and you know them you know everything about them you remember everything about them and they don't know who you are but the flip of the switch momentarily everything's back and then it's swept right. away again right it's got to be i i think that the most emotional turmoil of of situations in that aspect is thank god they don't remember mm -hmm. of what they're putting their loved ones through you know what right. I mean? Like that's, thank goodness. They're, they're going through enough. Little do they know it. If they do, that's horrible. If they don't, great. But for the rest of us picking up the pieces of each other, I think is, is the hardest part. 
Um, mm-hmm. so that's gonna be a tough one to read, but I'm like, I, I can't wait to at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. And um, one of the gentlemen that were in that is an author in this book, I had a couple of guys actually reach out to me once they said, you know, yeah, we'll do it, and then they stepped back and went, I don't know. <laughs> whoops I don't know if I want to do this but some things were really interesting in the sense of I had one author say you know she thought she was what am I going to write about I don't I'm too vanilla I don't have any big because she'd seen some of the stuff that we've been doing and then this gentleman had as well and he's like gosh I'm reading the posts you're doing and I'm watching the other you know things that have happened and what you're saying about this book and I don't have any massive tragedy or trauma or addictions and stuff and I keep saying we still have stories doesn't you know, it doesn't matter, right? I think our youngest author is 22. And our oldest, I won't even say. Very, very wise age. So it's a vast majority across the world, different cultures, um, different genders, we have dancers, we have burlesque dancers, we have belly dancers, we have all sorts of fun stuff. So um, all right, you guys, let me see. I want to ask you one final question. If this book's coming out in about a month. Mm-hmm. Is there any feelings you can think of, a word you can think of? Let's start with you, Ziggy, that you think about when the book goes launch again. Any any feeling you, put, you got? Shit. No. <laughs> That's, okay, the, just more or less is okay, here it goes. When, where My curiosity has always been who's that one person that is going gonna to get through to? Because at the end of the day, it could be 500,000 people are like, this guy sucks. Like, he doesn't know his ass from the hole in the ground. Yep, yep. But there's that one person that's like, it's all it takes, holy buddy. crap, they get me. They understand. Yeah. They get it. And that's that's it. That's that's all I hope for. Um, yeah. If there's none of that, I'll never know. But if there's some of that, that'd be cool, too. You know what I mean? That's Absolutely. kind of. Absolutely. And that's what, the, that's, that was the intriguing thing with the blogging, is sending it out to the masses. And this, right. who's going who's gonna to hit back? Who knows? No, but yeah, that's that's the big day one emotion. Okay, perfect. Martine, what about you? Yeah, like Ziggy was saying, it's like our stories are not for us anyway. You know, we go through these situations, but they're not for us. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to do this to begin with is because um, when my master coach said that, you know, you don't know what life you might save. You don't know what heart you might touch. Someone just to say, oh my gosh, like he said, somebody understands me. I am not alone. That's everything. Yeah. If everything. especially with this, you know, I have a, I got, I got goosebumps all over you guys. We're going to finish this up, but um, I had a contact. It was December of 2021. I believe somebody had seen me on LinkedIn and I'll try to keep my shit together. And he texts me and it was somebody I hadn't heard from since 2014. And he mm-hmm. saw the post of a project I was working on and he texts me and I I actually still had his contact. So I saw his name come up and I was on with a client. And for some reason, it just hit me to to ask my client just a second. And I read it. And he said that that post literally saved his life and he needed me to call him. And I started working with him. And like I said, it was seven years or something since I'd heard from him. So, all right, you guys, this is amazing. I want you to be ready to pick up this book, about 40 stories in there. It's going to be awesome. Lots of content. Um, Thank you, Dr. Teta, for writing our foreword. Again, thank you to Marcus Vetstein, my co-author. And you guys, I'm going to say goodbye to you, and I will see you. So um, long. (laughs) We'll see you later. I'll see you when we start drinking (laughs) vodka, and I don't even drink, but I'm going to need to drink. All right. (laughs) See you later, guys. Bye now. Bye.